Hi, you welcome to the Gem Estate. I'm very happy to be back here and to be able to share with you valuable insights and wonderful lessons from the Word of God. Um, this will be probably our first episode following up from our previous video on um, what the Holy Spirit was staring up in my heart concerning the year. And just to reiterate that again, I remember that the Lord was calling us out and showing us that we needed to demonstrate a called out, you know, stance from darkness to light and uh, being able to show forth his values and his glory and his light in a dark and unjust generation that we find ourselves in. And I'm very much excited, honestly, because um, I believe that it's been a long wait. I know many of us at the beginning of the year, some of us probably wait for maybe a week, a day, a month. Uh, but as Dijan pursued, we decided to wait on the Lord, you know, to ensure that whatever springs forth or whatever is birthed from us in the year has the signature of God and Christ in it. So if this is your first time you're tuning into any of our episodes, I welcome you to Diligent Pursuits. This is a platform um, that provides Bible study teachings of the Word of God. Um, we have prayer sessions and then we also have worship sessions. And then we have Diligent Pursuits Spirit and Mind podcast. Um, on the podcast, we have conversations and discussions with um, many different people, professionals, um, men and women of God, and people who are promoting and advancing the kingdom of God in the different spheres and different pillars of the economies and are ensuring that um, God's light and God's truth is permeating every darkness in these areas. And these conversations allow us to, you know, get a sense of what their lives have been, how they've been able to walk their journeys, and how we too, you know, through their exemplary values and, and um, decisions, we can also forge ahead in our own personal lives. So the Gen Pursuit really just gives you like a one stop for prayer, worship, Bible study, and conversations that help you, you know, navigate life, and brings you invaluable lessons right from the word of God. For the gem pursuit, I, I always say and I always stand that we don't have a point of view, we don't have our own opinions here. Our opinions are God's perspective and God's opinions. And so you can trust that we will maintain and we will remain truthful, you know, and aligned to God's word. And our focus is God's word. Amen. So on today's episode, we'll be looking at the book of Romans. I'll be reading as much from the Word of God and be sharing some valuable insights as well as we go along. I'm happy that you're here. I hope that you stay tuned to the end of this video and I pray that it's a blessing to you. So before we zoom in, guys, you need to have your Bibles. Please, in 2024, what we'll, be, what we'll not be doing is not having our Bibles with us for Bible study, okay? So yes, yeah, so I have two Bibles with me today, so I probably will be, you know, crisscrossing between those two. But I want to show them to you so you can have an idea of what I'm referencing. I will definitely, you know, um, pin it in the in the bio for you to see. But I just want you to have a look at what it looks like. So one of my Bibles, one of my favorite Bibles that I read all the time is the Amplified Bible. Amplified Holy Bible. This version actually captures the full meaning behind the original Greek and Hebrew. So I really love this one. Uh, it's, a, it's a personal favorite. And then another personal favorite of mine is Charles Swindle's Bible. Gosh. I don't know how many of you know Charles Swindle or have read any of his books, but Charles Swindle is an amazing writer. I love his writing. So, is the Charles Swindle Study Bible. I think this, let me just show you this like this so that you can see, you can see that. Yep, Charles Swindle. <laughs> yeah, so the Swindle Study Bible is also one of my favorites. And I'll be, you know, crisscrossing between the two, like I, I already mentioned. So, um, before we start, I just want to have a little prayer so that we prepare our hearts for the reading of God's word and for understanding. Let's pray. 
Father, we thank you for a time in your presence. Uh, we don't take this moment for granted. Holy Spirit, we ask that you reveal Jesus. Reveal the word to us. The spirit of truth. Let the word come alive in our hearts. Let it bear in our hearts, Father. So that this word will be a life-living manual that we would remember and we would imbibe and would assimilate. So that it becomes part of our wisdom for life. We thank you and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So let's turn our Bibles to the book of Romans. Um, I'm hoping we can finish chapter one today, but as the Lord would lead us and as we would be able to complete today, we'll start with the brief background of the book of Romans. Why to the book of Romans? Where are we at um, in, you know, in the context of what Paul is doing? The book of Romans was written by Paul, those of us who don't know yet. That's okay. That's why you're here. You get to learn. So, the book of Romans was written by Paul, the Apostle Paul. So, basically, Romans chapter 1 is talking about the saving of sinners, the grace of God, the justification by faith, the sanctification through the Spirit, and the security of the saved, or um, our assurance, the assurance to our salvation. Okay. So, I'm going to read from my Amplified Holy Bible. The book of Romans. Paul, a born servant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, personally chosen, representative, set apart for preaching the gospel of God, which is the good news of salvation, which he promised beforehand through the prophets and the sacred scriptures. Regarding his son, who as to the flesh, his human nature was born a descendant of David, and to his divine nature, according to the spirit of holiness, was openly designated to be the son of God with power by a resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, it is through him that we have received grace and our apostleship to promote obedience to the faith and make disciples for his name's sake among all the Gentiles. I want to pause and I want us to just delve deeper. I want to read the same verse from the Charles Window Bible um, so we can have a full clear grasp meaning of what has been said here. It says, through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell gentiles everywhere what god has done for them so that they will believe and obey him bringing glory to his name you know um, in this book we see that paul discusses something easily you know observable in the world and i'm pretty sure we we can we can allude to that even now um with the events that are happening in the world today we see the sinfulness of all humanity and the depravity of humanity. We see more and more how the entire world and people need Jesus. We see how a lot of people in thinking or deciding that they are finding something are actually lost. And in satisfying um, those needs or satisfying those desires actually have replaced or have substantiated um, the grace and the life of God with other things that don't fill, that don't satisfy. I immediately got the peace and got the conviction of what the Holy Spirit was trying to draw to my attention the whole time. And it was that, you know, through the apostleship, or through the authority that Jesus had given to Paul, and of course all the other apostles, but in the context of this letter to the Romans, we see that he is saying that the entire authority of what he was supposed to do and the entire work and assignment that he had was to promote the obedience okay, to the faith. The faith in who? The faith in, the, in our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, to bring a conviction to the obedience to the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and to make known what God has done for them. Announcing to them what Jesus has done on the cross. Announcing to them, you know, and letting them know and bringing them to this knowledge. So I personally love the Amplified Version because, I don't know, it just makes it so, it puts it in this very holistic context because bringing obedience to the faith, you know, and for me, it's like, that's the entirety of our journey. It's a life of obedience. And I see that it's where we start from 
and it's where we end you know we start in obedience and we end in obedience the only thing that will guide us in us the only thing that will guard us the only thing that will keep us you know and anchored in the entire journey is our obedience to the three because it's just a path that is going to go into deeper and stronger conviction and obedience to the word of God and to his instructions. Uh, but in this context and today's episode, this verse stood out to me and I would love that we take a pause on this verse, let it marinate, you know, let it digest, let us meditate on it. And in that, in what ways, first of all, as a child of God, as somebody who's serving, as somebody who's promoting the kingdom of God, in what ways are you promoting obedience to the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ? In what ways are you letting all the Gentiles, you know, be making making him known to people far and near? And um, in what ways also as somebody who's probably heard, who's probably made, made aware of his wonderful grace, in what ways are you responding, you know, to this great salvation? And in what ways are you obedient to this faith? And the second part also says that in making disciples, um, the, the, the word disciple literally means, you know, a student who's, who's, who's obedient or who's, who's understanding a master or somebody greater. And our entire journey, again, is a life of studentship. You know, we are constantly learning and we're constantly studying the word of God. And through the revelation by the Holy Spirit of God's word, because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth and he reveals the word. The Bible says that he will bring us to remembrance of the word that I, Jesus, I have spoken to you. So he reveals Jesus. He reveals the word of God. He is the spirit of truth. He reveals the truth. So if you don't have the word of God, the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, cannot speak to your heart and bring conviction to you, bring instruction to you, and bring direction to you. And so under our discipleship, we are trained and we understudy our master, Jesus. And we study him primarily through his word. And once we study his word, the Holy Spirit, which he has given to us, you know, who lives inside of us, by revelation of this word, we study and we and we in Bible we meditate on, we are led by him. You know, as we are led by him, that becomes the seal of our sonship and our identity as the children of God. So today I've had a wonderful time. You know, I I guess we're only able to read Romans chapter one verses one to five, but it's been a great time and I can't wait for the next episode where we continue to understand what Paul meant to address and communicate through his letter to the Romans. So God bless you and see you next time. Bye.